Collecting food is strictly divided between the sexes. Only men can hunt the larger animals, which often entails leaving the village for a week or more. The women forage closer to home. This fishing basket is beautifully woven from bamboo, using an old basket as a frame. I think I'm doing all right, but I'm nowhere near as fast as the women. You've got to have nimble fingers for this job. Of course, the only problem with having to learn from the women all the time is you've got to put up with all their bickering. <laughs> I haven't broken it yet. <laughs> this environment is so productive that there's an easy meal to be had almost everywhere. This river is teeming with life. Can I have a look? Let's see what they've got in their baskets. They've got a crab. There are also shrimps and little fish in here. It's incredible. There's a meal to be had here really easily, as long as you've got the right tool. For that, they're using this basket, made from a single piece of bamboo. And of course, if you've got bamboo, you've also got the means to make a fire and a cooking pot to cook your meal. There's the cooking pot, nice tube, all ready to go. They put the prawns in the tube with some water and now they've stuffed it with manioc leaves to cook with it. And an extra big wadge just to finish off with to seal in the steam. Ingenious. Another astounding use is flooring, both for hunting lodges and the houses in the village. Split and spread flat, it takes only a few big bamboo to make a raised floor to protect you from the jungle nasties and the damp. Smooth and springy, it will last for years. To make fire, what I need is some dry bamboo like this. And on this piece of bamboo, I have to cut a notch. This piece of bamboo needs to be sharpened up because this is going to make a soaring edge to work onto that bamboo like that. Dead bamboo like this is the perfect tinder provider. Bamboo has like a varnish coating on it which keeps out moisture. You, you remove that varnish, and these wood fibers here are dry. And we can make that into two little tinder bundles by scraping. I'm going to take this tinder and put that on the inside of the hole in two small bundles. And to hold that in place, we're going to need just one more piece of bamboo, which we'll split and break so that it holds it without crushing it. Now we're ready to make fire. Neat trick.
And with fire, you can cook your prawns in that bamboo steamer. You know, a meal like this sort of epitomizes survival. You start out with the right resource, in this case bamboo, you couple that with a bit of knowledge, and at the end you get the reward. Beautiful jungle shrimp. Enak. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Trapping may seem very hit or miss, but actually it's not. And while you've caught this pig, and they want to keep him alive, you can see he's pretty distressed and angry. Taking a pig out of a trap alive is a very dangerous thing. So I'm going to stay well out of the way and let them get on with it. They want to take it back to the village to fatten it up, which is how wild animals first became domesticated. The Nualu set traps all over their forest, so they must travel for hours to check whether they've been successful. It's very hot, humid and gruelling work not without its dangers. Most of the wild animals they catch end up like this pig, dead. The fat and crackling from the pig are highly prized. This is a quick and easy way to singe the hair off in preparation for cooking using dry sago leaves. Mm. <laughs> Some banana leaves make a butcher's table. Another tube of bamboo is the cooking pot. And midrib of sago leaf for tongs. While the pig is cooking, Sanjali and Matoki head off into the night to see what else they can find to cook. The nocturnal couscous is a reliable source of meat for everyone except the Nipani clan. Plentiful, very tasty, and luckily a bit slow. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.